made me the leader of the structure in Lagos. Bola Tinubu, popularly known as Bad, is a Nigerian politician and a businessman born on March 29, 1952 in Lagos State, Nigeria. He is one of the most prominent political figures in the country, having served as the governor of Lagos State from 1999 to 2007. Today, he is the declared winner of the controversial and still under litigation 2023 Nigeria presidential elections. Jagaban, as a former accountant and Chicago University alumna is fondly called, is the president-elect of Nigeria awaiting to be sworn in by May 29, 2023, if all goes well at the courts. In this documentary, we are going to look at Bola Tinubu's journey to the presidency. Specifically, we are going to focus on his successes and challenges as a political powerhouse in Lagos State and by extension, Nigeria. Tinubu is widely credited with transforming Lagos into one of the most developed states in Nigeria and his political influence extends well beyond the state. He is reputed for resurrecting the career of Muhammadu Buhari and making him president even when the former military head of state had given up. Bola Tinubu's political proteges cut across Nigeria from governors to ministers and to national assembly leaders. Bola Ame Tinubu was born into the Tinubu family, one of the most prominent families in Lagos State. His family is said to have migrated from Moshun State to Lagos. He grew up in the city of Lagos and attended St. John's Primary School, Aroloya, Lagos, and Children's Home School in Ibadan. He then went to attend the prestigious government college Ibadan before proceeding to the United States for his higher education. Tinubu obtained a bachelor's degree in accounting from Chicago State University in 1979 and a master's degree in business administration from the same institution in 1983. His education was a subject of much controversy during the elections. However, from official indications, there is no credible reason to doubt Tinubu's educational credentials. Bola Tinubu worked in the United States for a few years before returning to Nigeria to start his business career. Bola Tinubu's time in the United States is not without controversy. There have been reports in some Nigerian news outlets that Bola Tinubu's assets were frozen by the United States government, which included a forfeiture of $460,000. Bola Tinubu has denied that the forfeiture resulted from any criminal conviction, as reported by some media outlets. So far, there has been no evidence to the contrary. In the 1990s, Tinubu became involved in politics, initially as a member of the Social Democratic Party. He later joined the National Democratic Coalition, NADECO, a pro-democracy group that opposed the military regime of General Sani Apacha. Tinubu played a prominent role in the struggle for democracy in Nigeria and was one of the key figures that led to the eventual transition to democracy in 1999. In 1999, Bola Tinubu was elected as the governor of Lagos State under the platform of the Alliance for Democracy, AD. During his tenure, he implemented various policies and programs that transformed Lagos State into one of the most developed states in Nigeria. He initiated several infrastructural projects, such as the construction of the Lakey Ekbe Expressway, the expansion of the Lagos Badagri Expressway, and the construction of the Ted Milan Bridge. Tinubu also implemented various social programs that improved the lives of Lagosians, such as the establishment of the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority, LASTMA the Lagos State Waste Management Authority, LOMA, and the Lagos State Empowerment Trust Fund, LSETF. He also reformed the state's tax system 
making it more efficient and effective and increase the state's internally generated revenue. Bola Ame Tinubu's tenure was marked by several notable achievements. Here are some specific examples. Number 1. Infrastructural Development Bola Tinubu served as governor of Lagos State in Nigeria from 1999 to 2007. During his tenure, he implemented several infrastructure development programs in Lagos State, which were aimed at improving the quality of lives of residents and boosting the economy of the state. Here are some key numbers and figures that highlight the successes of these infrastructural programs. 1. Road Infrastructure Under Bola Tinubu's leadership, Lagos State constructed and rehabilitated over 2,000 kilometers of road, including several major highways such as the Lakey Expressway, the Lagos Badagri Expressway, and the Lagos Abeokuta Expressway. 2. Housing Development Bola Tinubu's administration embarked on a massive public housing scheme which resulted in the construction of over 20,000 housing units across Lagos State. This initiative provided affordable housing to thousands of Lagosians. 3. Healthcare Tinubu's administration established the Lagos State Health Management Agency, LASHMA, which was tasked with providing quality healthcare services to residents of Lagos State. The agency established several primary healthcare centers across the state and also upgraded several public hospitals. Number 4. Education Tinubu's administration embarked on a massive overhaul of the education sector in Lagos State during his administration. This included the construction of over 1,000 new classrooms, the rehabilitation of several schools, and the provision of free textbooks and other educational materials to primary and secondary school students. Number 5. Security Tinubu's administration established Lagos State Security Trust Fund, which was aimed at providing financial support for the procurement of security equipment and infrastructure. This initiative led to a significant reduction in crime rates in the state. Overall, the infrastructure development programs implemented during Bola Tinubu's tenure as governor of Lagos State were quite successful as evidenced by the various projects and initiatives he undertook and the positive impact they had on the lives of Lagosians. Infrastructural Development Challenges under Bola Tinubu It is important to know that every government or leader will have their successes and failures. Here are some potential areas where Bola Tinubu's administration may have faced challenges or experienced failures in terms of infrastructure development. Number 1. Transportation While Tinubu's administration did make significant investment in road infrastructure, traffic congestion remained a major problem in Lagos State during and after his tenure as governor. The growth in population and vehicle ownership has continued to put pressure on the city's road network, resulting in severe traffic congestion. 2. Waste Management Despite making efforts to improve waste management in Lagos State, Tinubu's administration faced challenges with garbage disposal and waste management. This led to problems such as overflowing landfills and illegal dumping, which have persisted to this day. Number 3. Power Supply During Tinubu's tenure as governor, Lagos State faced challenges with electricity supply. While the state government made investment in power generation and distribution, many areas of Lagos State still experience frequent power outages. Number 5. Environmental Management Lagos State faced environmental challenges during and after Tinubu's tenure as governor, such as flooding and poor sanitation. While some efforts were made to address these issues, they have remained a persistent problem in the state. The Establishment of LASMA Bola Tinubu established the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority LASMA to improve traffic flow and reduce road accidents in Lagos State. LASMA is responsible for regulating traffic, enforcing traffic laws, and ensuring safety on the roads. LASMA was established in the year 2000. Here is an overview of success of LASMA during Tinubu's tenure and after he left office. During Tunubu's tenure as governor, LASMA was able to significantly improve traffic control in Lagos State. 
According to reports, there was a 40% reduction in traffic congestion in the state within the first few months of LASMA's establishment. Road Safety LASMA has also been successful in promoting road safety in Lagos State. According to reports, there was a significant reduction in road accidents and fatalities in the state after last month's establishment. Staffing During Tinubu's tenure as governor, LASMA had a staff strength of about 500 officers. However, after he left office, the agency's staff strength increased to over 2,500 officers. Technology after Tinubu's tenure, LASMA continued to embrace technology in its operations. The agency implemented a computerized traffic management system that enables real-time monitoring and control of traffic in the state. Collaboration LASMA has also been successful in collaborating with other government agencies and stakeholders to improve traffic management in Lagos State. The agency works closely with the Lagos State Ministry of Transportation the Nigerian police and other relevant agencies to ensure effective traffic control and management. Overall, LASMA has been successful in improving traffic management and promoting road safety in Lagos State. Bola Tinubu's administration played a significant role in establishing the agency and laying the foundation for its success. However, the agency's success can be attributed to the commitment of successive administrations to continue to support LASMA and invest in technology, staff training, and collaboration with stakeholders. Challenges and failures of LASMA Lagos LASMA has received some criticisms over the years, despite being widely acknowledged for its effectiveness in managing traffic in Lagos State. Some of the criticisms include 1. Allegations of corruption There have been allegations of corruption and extortion against some LASMA officials with reports of them demanding bribes or engaging in other forms of corrupt practices. 2. Use of force There have been instances where some LASMA officials have been accused of using excessive force when enforcing traffic laws, leading to physical altercations and injuries. 3. Poor attitude towards road users some motorists have complained about the attitude of LASMA officials towards road users, describing them as rude and confrontational. 4. Lack of proper training There have been complaints about the lack of proper training for LASMA officials, which has resulted in some of them not being adequately equipped to handle certain situations on the road. 5. Inadequate funding and resources Despite its effectiveness, some critics have argued that LASMA does not have adequate funding and resources to effectively carry out its duties, which limits its capacity to address traffic challenges in Lagos State. It is worth noting that successive Lagos State government has taken steps to address some of these criticisms, such as providing training for LASMA officials, implementing a whistleblower policy to address corruption, and improving the working conditions of LASMA officials. Establishment of LOMA Bola Tinubu also established the Lagos State Waste Management Authority, LOMA, to address the issue of poor waste management in Lagos State. LOMA is responsible for collecting, disposing, and managing waste in the state. Bola Tinubu's LOMA initiative was established in 2001 during his tenure as the governor of Lagos State. The initiative aimed to improve the management of waste in the state through the privatization of waste collection and disposal services. During Tenubu's tenure, the LOMA initiative saw significant progress, with the number of waste collection trucks increasing from 10 to 270, and the number of mechanized sweepers increasing from 20 to 400. Additionally, the initiative led to the establishment of transfer loading stations and the landfill site in Ekbe. After Tinubu's tenure, the LOMA initiative continued to operate, and in 2017, the Lagos State Government announced plans to increase the number of waste collection trucks to 900 and the number of waste compactor trucks to 600. The government also planned to establish more transfer loading stations and upgrade existing landfill sites. Challenges of LOMA one of the major challenges faced by the LOMA initiative during Tinubu's tenure was inadequate funding and resources for waste management. Despite efforts to privatize waste collection and disposal services, the government continued to bear a significant portion of the cost of waste management. Another challenge was the lack of public awareness and participation in waste management practices. 
This led to issues such as illegal dumping and littering, which undermined the effectiveness of the initiative. After Tinubu's tenure, the Loma Initiative continued to face similar challenges. For example, in 2017, the Lagos State Government reported that it was spending over 500 million naira monthly on waste management, highlighting the continued financial burden on the government. The government also reported that illegal dumping remained a significant challenge, with over 1,000 illegal dump sites identified in the state. Overall, the Loma Initiative faced significant challenges during and after Tinubu's tenure, including inadequate funding and resources and the lack of public awareness participation in waste management. Overall, the Loma Initiative appears to have made significant progress during Tinubu's tenure and continues to operate after its tenure. However, its effectiveness and success may be subject to different interpretations and opinions. Tax Reform Bola Tinubu reformed the state's tax system, making it more efficient and effective. He introduced the Land Use Charge (LUC), which replaced several taxes and levies in legal state. The LUC made it easier for residents to pay their taxes and increase the state's internally generated revenue. During his tenure as governor of Lagos State, Bola Tinubu implemented a series of reforms aimed at increasing the efficiency and the effectiveness of revenue collection in the state. According to available data, these reforms led to a significant increase in the state's internally generated revenue (IGR) from about 4.4 billion naira in 1999 to over 18 billion naira in 2007. Here's a breakdown of the IGR figures during Tinubu's tenure: 1999, 4.4 billion naira; 2000, 6.9 billion naira; 2001, 10.3 billion naira; 2002, 14.9 billion naira. 2003, 16.7 billion naira. 2004, 18.1 billion naira. 2005, 20.3 billion naira. 2006, 23.3 billion naira. 2007, 28.4 billion naira. This represents a significant increase in revenue over eight year period, with an average annual growth rate of over 23%. Bolatinubu's revenue collection system reforms included the introduction of a computerized revenue collection system, the establishment of Lagos State Internal Revenue Service (LIROS) as an autonomous agency responsible for tax collection, and the use of technologies to track and monitor revenue collection activities. These reforms aim to improve transparency, reduce leakages, and increase revenue collection efficiency in the state. Overall. Tinubu's transformation of Lagos State's revenue collection system was successful, as evidenced by the significant increase in internally generated revenue. The reforms implemented by his administration were crucial in making Lagos State one of the most financially viable states in Nigeria, and this has continued to be sustained by subsequent administrations. Challenges of Revenue Collection System in Lagos State Lagos State has implemented various revenue collection systems and practices over the years. And while some of these have been effective, there have also been criticisms of these systems and practices. Some of the criticisms include allegations of corruption. There have been allegations of corruption in revenue collection processes, with reports of government officials and contractors demanding bribes or engaging in other forms of corrupt practices. Lack of transparency. Some critics have argued that the revenue collection process is not transparent enough, with some of the revenue generated not being properly accounted for or utilized for the intended purposes. Inadequate consultation with stakeholders There have been complaints from some stakeholders that they are not adequately consulted or involved in the revenue collection process, which can lead to disputes and conflicts. High fees and charges some stakeholders have argued that the fees and charges imposed by the Lagos State government are too high, which can lead to financial hardship for businesses and individuals. Poor infrastructure. Some have argued that the revenue collection infrastructure is inadequate, with reports of long queues, delays, and other challenges. It is worth noting that the Lagos State government has taken steps to address some of these criticisms, such as introducing new revenue collection technologies, improving transparency and accountability in the process, and involving training for revenue collection officials. However, there is still room for improvement, and ongoing efforts to address these criticisms are necessary to ensure an effective and efficient revenue collection system in Lagos State. Social Programs 
Bola Tinubu initiated several social programs that improved the lives of Lagosians, such as the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, LSETF, which provide funding and support for small and medium-sized enterprises in Lagos State. The LSETF has created thousands of jobs and helped reduce unemployment in the state. The Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, LSETF, was established in 2016 by the administration of Governor Akin Wumi Abode after Tinubu's tenure as Governor of Lagos State. However, during Tinubu's time as Governor, he implemented several policies aimed at promoting job creation and entrepreneurship in the state. Here is an overview of the successes of the LSETF since its establishment. Funding Disbursement According to the LSETF's annual report for 2020, the fund has disbursed a total of $10.8 billion to over 15,000 beneficiaries since inception. This includes $5.7 billion disbursed to 8,229 beneficiaries in 2020 alone. Job creation The LSETF has been successful in creating employment opportunities in Lagos State. According to the LSETF 2020 annual report, the fund has helped create over 100,000 jobs since its establishment, including direct and indirect jobs. Entrepreneurship Development The LSETF has also been successful in supporting entrepreneurship development in Lagos State. The fund provides access to affordable finance, business advisory services, and capacity building programs to entrepreneurs. The LSETF annual report for 2020 indicates that over 70% of the fund's beneficiaries are micro-enterprises and over 75% of the fund's loan beneficiaries are women and youth entrepreneurs. Loan Repayment The LSETF has also been successful in loan repayment. According to the LSETF annual report for 2020, the repayment rate for loan disbursed by the fund was 97 in 2020, indicating that most of the beneficiaries of the fund are creditworthy and have been able to pay back their loans. Overall, the LSETF has been successful in promoting job creation and entrepreneurship development in Lagos State. Though the fund was established after Tinubu's tenure as governor, his administration implemented policies aimed at creating an enabling environment for job creation and entrepreneurship development. The success of the LSETF can be attributed to the continuation of these policies and the commitment of successive administrations in Lagos State to support all small businesses and promote job creation in the state. Challenges of social programs during Tinubu's term as governor During Bola Tinubu's tenure as governor of Lagos State, his administration implemented several social programs aimed at poverty alleviation and economic empowerment. However, some of the programs experienced failures and challenges. Here are some figures that highlight the failures of social programs during Tinubu's term as governor and after he left office. Youth Empowerment Scheme Yes. The YES program was launched in 2003 with the aim of providing skills training and startup capital to unemployed youth in Lagos State. However, the program was marred by allegations of corruption and mismanagement. According to a 2005 report by the Lagos State House of Assembly, only 15% of the beneficiaries of the program received their startup capital. The program was eventually scrapped in 2007. Poverty Alleviation Programs Bola Tinubu's administration implemented several poverty alleviation programs, including the Poverty Alleviation Fund PAF, which provided microcredit loans to small businesses. However, these programs were criticized for their limited impact and sustainability. According to a 2007 report by the Lagos State Poverty Alleviation Committee, only 16% of the beneficiaries of the PAF were able to repay their loans and the program was eventually replaced by the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund in 2016. Healthcare programs. Tinubu's administration launched several healthcare programs aimed at improving access to healthcare services for low income residents of Lagos. However, these programs were also criticized for their limited impact and sustainability. According to a 2007 report by the Lagos State Ministry of Health, only 10% of the beneficiaries of the Batana Child Health Program attended all required clinics and the program was eventually replaced by the Lagos State Health Insurance Scheme in 2015. Education programs Tinubu's administration implemented several education programs aimed at improving access to education for low-income residents of Lagos State. However, these programs were also criticized for their limited impact and sustainability. According to a 2007 report by the Lagos State Ministry of Education, only 50% of the beneficiaries of the free education program attended school regularly and the program was eventually replaced by the Lagos State Education Trust Fund in 2007. 
Overall, while Tinubu's administration implemented several social programs aimed at poverty alleviation and economic empowerment, many of these programs experienced failures and challenges, including allegations of corruption and mismanagement, limited impact and sustainability, and the need for replacement by more effective programs. Education Bola Tinubu also improved the education sector in Lagos State by increasing the budget allocation for education and providing funding for the construction of new schools and rehabilitation of existing ones. He also introduced a free school feeding program which provided meals for primary school pupils in the state. During Tinubu's tenure as governor of Lagos State from 1999 to 2007, there were significant improvements in the educational system in the state. Here are some key achievements during his tenure. School Infrastructure Bola Tinubu's administration invested heavily in school infrastructure with the construction and renovation of over 400 primary and secondary schools across the state. Teacher Training The Bola Tinubu administration also prioritized teacher training and development with the establishment of the Lagos State Teaching Service Commission to oversee teacher recruitment, training and certification. Curriculum Development Bola Tinubu's administration introduced a new curriculum that placed emphasis on vocational and technical education as well as computer literacy. Free Primary Education In 2004, Bola Tinubu's administration introduced free primary education in Lagos State, which led to a significant increase in enrollment rates. After Tinubu left office, the Lagos State government continued to prioritize education as a key sector for development. Here are some figures that demonstrate success of the education system in Lagos State after Tinubu's tenure. Enrollment According to the National Bureau of Statistics, enrollment in primary and secondary schools in Lagos State increased from 2.2 million in 2007, the year Tinubu left office, to 3.9 million in 2020. Teacher Quality The Lagos State Government has continued to invest in teacher training and development with the establishment of the Lagos State Teachers Institute to provide professional development for teachers. In 2020, the state government announced plans to recruit 2,000 teachers to address staffing shortages in public schools. Infrastructure The Lagos state government has continued to invest in school infrastructure with the construction and renovation of new classrooms, libraries, and laboratories. In 2020, the government announced plans to construct 18 new public schools and renovate 998 existing ones. ICT in Education the Lagos State Government has also continued to prioritize computer literacy in schools with the provision of computer laboratories and ICT training for teachers. Overall, the educational system in Lagos State has seen significant improvement during and after Tinubu's tenure as governor. While Tinubu's administration laid the foundation for this improvement, the successive administrations have continued to invest in the sector to drive development and growth. Challenges of education system during Tinubu's administration while there were some improvement in the education system in Lagos State during Tinubu's tenure as governor and after he left office, there were also some failures and areas of improvement. Here are some figures that highlight some of the failures of the education system during Tinubu's term as governor and after he left office. Out of school children During Tinubu's tenure as governor, there were still a significant number of out of school children in Lagos State. In 2003, it was estimated that there were over 1 million out-of-school children in Lagos State alone. By 2018, this number had decreased to about 250,000, but it was still a significant number. Quality of Education While Tinubu's administration introduced initiatives to improve the quality of education in Lagos State, the quality of education remained a challenge. In 2003, the West African Examination Council reported that only 27% of students in Lagos State passed their exams with five credits, including English and mathematics. By 2018, the pass rate had improved to 63%, but this was still below the national average. Teacher Quality The quality of teachers in Lagos State remained a challenge during and after Tinubu's tenure as governor. In 2003, the Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria reported that only 40% of teachers in Lagos State were qualified. By 2018, this number had improved to 80%, but there were still challenges with teacher quality, including inadequate training and certification. Education Financing While Tinubu's administration increased funding for education in Lagos State, education financing remained a challenge. In 2003, the Lagos State Government allocated 11.6% of its budget to education, which was below the recommended minimum of 26%. But in 
By 2021, the Lagos state government had increased its education budget to 15.2%, but this was still below the recommended minimum. Overall, while there were some improvements in the education system in Lagos State during and after Tinubu's tenure as governor, there were also persistent challenges and areas for improvement. Healthcare Bola Tinubu improved the healthcare sector in Lagos State by upgrading hospitals and healthcare centers, increasing the number of healthcare workers, and providing free healthcare for pregnant women and children under the age of five. During Tinubu's tenure as governor of Lagos State from 1999 to 2007, there were significant improvements in the healthcare system in the state. Here are some key achievements during his tenure. Primary healthcare Tinubu administration prioritized primary healthcare with the establishment of over 300 primary healthcare centers across the state. Health insurance the Tinubu administration also introduced the Lagos State Health Management Agency to provide affordable health insurance to residents. Health Infrastructure Tinubu's administration invested in health infrastructure with the construction and renovation of hospitals and clinics across the state. Disease Control The Tinubu administration also implemented disease control measures such as the establishment of the Lagos State Blood Transfusion Committee and the Lagos State Malaria Control Program. After Tinubu left office, the Lagos State government continued to prioritize healthcare as a key sector for development. Here are some figures that demonstrate success of the healthcare system in Lagos State after Tinubu's tenure. Health insurance. As of 2021, the Lagos State Health Management Agency provides healthcare insurance coverage to over 400,000 residents. Disease control. The Lagos State government has continued to invest in disease control measures, such as the establishment of the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency and the Lagos State AIDS Control Agency. Health infrastructure. The Lagos State government has also continued to invest in health infrastructure with the construction and renovation of hospitals and clinics across the state. In 2019, the government announced plans to construct 10 new maternal and child healthcare centers. COVID-19 response. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the Lagos State government took proactive measures to prevent the spread of the virus, such as the establishment of isolation centers and the distribution of free face masks to residents. Overall, overall, the healthcare system in Lagos State has seen significant improvements during and after Tinubu's tenure as governor. While Tinubu's administration laid the foundation for these improvements, the successive administration have continued to invest in the sector to drive development and growth. Healthcare challenges in Lagos during Tinubu's administration. It is important to know that while there were improvements in healthcare system in Lagos State during Tinubu's tenure as governor, there were also challenges and areas for improvement. Here are some figures that highlight some of these failures of the healthcare system during Tinubu's term as governor and after he left office. Maternal mortality. Despite improvement in the healthcare system, maternal mortality rates in Lagos State remained high during Tinubu's tenure as governor and after he left office. In 2003, the maternal mortality rate in Lagos State was estimated to be 445 deaths per 100,000 live births. By 2015, the maternal mortality rate had decreased to 324 deaths per 100,000 live births, but this was still higher than the national average of 266 deaths per 100,000 live births. Doctor-patient ratio The doctor-patient ratio in Lagos State has been a persistent challenge. During Tinubu's tenure as governor, the doctor-patient ratio in Lagos State was estimated to be one doctor to 5,000 patients, which was lower than the recommended ratio of one doctor to 600 patients. As of 2021, the doctor-patient ratio in Lagos State is estimated to be one doctor to 5,000 patients, which is still below the recommended average. Health financing while Tinubu's administration introduced the Lagos State Health Management Agency to provide affordable health insurance to residents, health financing remained a challenge. In 2006, the Lagos State government allocated only 4.8% of its budget to healthcare, which was below the recommended minimum of 15%. As of 2021, the Lagos State government has increased its healthcare budget to 12%, but this is still below the recommended minimum. Access to healthcare. Despite the improvements in healthcare infrastructure and the establishment of the primary healthcare centers, access to healthcare remained a challenge during and after Tinubu's tenure as governor. Many residents still face challenges accessing healthcare due to factors such as distance, cost, and inadequate healthcare services in certain areas. Overall, 
while there were improvements in the healthcare system in Lagos State during and after Tinubu's tenure as governor, there were also persistent challenges and areas for improvement, particularly in the areas of maternal mortality, doctor patient ratio, health financing, and access to healthcare. Bola Tinubu's approach to governors helped to transform Lagos State into one of the most developed states in Nigeria and cemented his legacy as a visionary leader who was committed to development of the state and the welfare of its citizens. Bola Tinubu's achievement as governor of Lagos State made him one of the most popular and influential politicians in Nigeria. He later founded the Action Congress of Nigeria, the ACN, which later merged with other opposition parties to form the All Progressive Congress, APC which is currently the ruling party in Nigeria. Bola Tinubu's Philanthropy Bola Tinubu has also been involved in philanthropic activities through his Bola Ahmed Tinubu Foundation, which focuses on education, poverty alleviation, and youth empowerment. He has received numerous awards and recognition for his contributions to politics and governance in Nigeria. Criticisms and Allegations Against Bola Tinubu there have been several corruption allegations against Bola Ahmed Tinubu, although he has denied them. Here are some of the specific accusations. Alleged misappropriation of Lagos State funds. In 2018, a former Lagos State Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget, Olusegun Banjo, accused Tinubu of misappropriating Lagos State funds during his tenure as governor. Banjo alleged that Tinubu had control over the state's revenue account and that he used the funds for personal purposes. Alleged fraudulent sale of Lagos State property. In 2020, a group called the Coalition Against Corruption and Bad Governance accused Tinubu of fraudulently selling a property belonging to Lagos State government. The property in question is a prime land located at number 26 Bodilon Road, Ikoi, Lagos, which was allegedly sold to a company owned by Tinubu's family members. Alleged money laundry. In 2016, a former Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Timmy Frank, accused Tinubu of money laundry. Frank alleged that Tinubu used funds from Lagos State to purchase properties in the United States and the United Kingdom. Alleged Tax Evasion In 2019, a group called the Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership accused Tinubu of evading taxes on the property he owned in Lagos State. The group alleged that Tinubu had not paid taxes on the property and that he had been able to evade taxes due to his political influence. It is important to know that Tinubu has consistently denied these allegations and he has not been formally charged or convicted of any corruption-related offenses. What to expect from Bola Tinubu as the President of Nigeria? It is difficult to predict with certainty how Bola Ahmed Tinubu would perform as President of Nigeria as there are many factors that could influence his performance including the state of the economy, security challenges and political dynamics. However, based on his achievement as Governor of Lagos State, Bola Tinubu has demonstrated a strong commitment to infrastructure development, tax reform, social programs, education and health care. As the President of Nigeria, it is likely that he would prioritize these areas and work to improve them on a national level. In addition, Tinubu is a seasoned politician and a skilled negotiator, which could be beneficial in navigating the complex political landscape of Nigeria. He has also demonstrated an ability to work across party lines, which could help to build consensus and promote unity in Nigeria. On the other hand, Tinubu has been the subject of several corruption allegations which could potentially undermine his performance as president. Furthermore, Nigeria is a complex and diverse country with many different regions, cultures, and ethnic groups. As president, Bola Tinubu will need to be sensitive to these differences and work to promote unity and inclusivity. He would also need to address the country's security challenges, including terrorism, banditry, and kidnapping. Overall, Bola Tinubu's record as the governor of Lagos State suggests that he has the potential to be an effective president of Nigeria. Security Challenges Nigeria's insecurity problem is complex and multidimensional and it will require a multi-pronged approach to address it. Here are some specific ways that someone with Tinubu's experience, education and background could help to solve Nigeria's insecurity problem. 1. Addressing the root causes Insecurity in Nigeria is often linked to poverty, unemployment, and social inequality. 
Bola Tinubu could prioritize addressing these root causes by creating more jobs and economic opportunities, promoting social programs to reduce poverty, and investing in education and skills training to increase the employability of young people. 2. Strengthening Security Forces Nigeria's security forces are currently overstretched and under-resourced, which makes it difficult for them to effectively combat insecurity. Bola Tinubu could prioritize strengthening the capacity of the security forces by providing more funding, training and equipment, as well as improving their coordination and intelligence gathering capabilities. 3. Promoting Community Policing Community policing is a proactive approach that involves partnering with communities to identify and address security threats. Tinubu could promote community policing by providing training and resources to local police forces and encouraging citizens to participate in crime prevention efforts. 4. Engaging in Diplomacy Insecurity in Nigeria is often linked to regional and international issues such as cross-border terrorism and trafficking. Bola Tinubu could engage in diplomacy with neighboring countries and international organizations to address these issues and promote regional security cooperation. 5. Promoting Reconciliation Insecurity in Nigeria is also linked to ethnic and religious tensions which can be exacerbated by political and economic competition. Bola Tinubu could promote reconciliation and dialogue between different groups by creating platforms for dialogue and supporting initiatives that promote social cohesion and inclusivity. Overall, Bola Tinubu with his experience, education and background could help solve Nigeria's insecurity problem by addressing its root causes, strengthening the capacity of the security forces, promoting community policing, engaging in diplomacy and promoting reconciliation. Solving Nigeria's Infrastructure Problem Nigeria as a country has a significant infrastructure deficit in areas such as transportation, power, which hinders economic development and quality of life for its citizens. Bola Tinubu could use the following approaches to solve Nigeria's infrastructure problems. Prioritizing Infrastructure Development Bola Tinubu could prioritize infrastructure development by identifying critical areas of need and allocating resources to these areas. This could involve investing in road, rail and air transport infrastructure as well as energy and water supply infrastructure. Encouraging private sector investment The government cannot address Nigeria's infrastructure needs alone and private sector investment will be critical. Bola Tinubu will do well by encouraging private sector investment by creating an enabling environment for businesses and reducing regulatory barriers to investment. Using innovative financing models Nigeria's infrastructure needs are significant and the government will need to explore innovative financing models to address them. Bola Tinubu could explore financing models such as public-private partnerships and infrastructure bonds to mobilize funding for infrastructure development. Enhancing Project Management Poor project management has been a significant barrier to infrastructure development in Nigeria, leading to delays and cost overruns. Tinubu could prioritize improving project management by strengthening institutional capacity, enhancing accountability, and improving the monitoring and evaluation of infrastructure projects. Using Technology to Improve Infrastructure Technology can play an important role in improving Nigeria's infrastructure. Bola Tinubu could leverage technology to improve transportation systems, enhance energy efficiency, and optimize water supply and distribution. Overall, Tinubu, with his experience, education, and background, could help to solve Nigeria's infrastructure problem by prioritizing infrastructure development, encouraging private sector investment, using innovative financing models, enhancing project management, and leveraging technology. However, it will require a sustained effort and collaboration between the government, private sector, and other stakeholders to make significant progress. Solving Nigeria's Electricity Problems Nigeria's electricity problem is a critical issue that hinders economic growth and development. Here are some specific ways that Bola Tinubu could solve Nigeria's problem in this area. Diversifying the energy mix Nigeria currently relies heavily on gas-fired power plants for electricity generation, which makes the power system vulnerable to disruptions in gas supply. Bola Tinubu could prioritize diversifying the energy mix by promoting renewable energy sources such as solar, wind, and hydroelectric power. Increasing generation capacity 
Nigeria's current electricity generation capacity is insufficient to meet demand, leading to frequent power outages. Bola Tinubu could prioritize generation capacity by investing in new power plants, upgrading existing facilities, and promoting distributed generation through microgrids and off-grid solutions. Addressing Transmission and Distribution Challenges Nigeria's power transmission and distribution infrastructure are outdated and inefficient, leading to significant losses and poor service delivery. Bola Tinubu could prioritize addressing these challenges by investing in transmission and distribution infrastructure, improving metro and billing systems, and promoting customer engagement and participation in the power system. Encouraging Private Sector Investment Private sector investment will be critical to solving Nigeria's electricity problem. Bola Tinubu could encourage private sector investment by creating an enabling environment for businesses, reducing regulatory barriers to investment, and promoting innovative financing models such as public-private partnerships. Strengthening Institutional Capacity Weak institutional capacity has been a significant barrier to solving Nigeria's electricity problems. Bola Tinubu could prioritize strengthening this area by improving governance and regulatory frameworks, enhancing transparency and accountability, are promoting knowledge sharing and collaboration among stakeholders. Overall, Bola Tinubu with his experience could solve Nigeria's electricity problem by diversifying the energy mix, increasing generation capacity, addressing transmission and distribution challenges, encouraging private sector investment, and strengthening institutional capacity. However, it will require a sustained and multi-pronged effort to make a lasting progress. Strengthening Nigeria's Institutional Capacity Strengthening Nigeria's institutional capacity is critical for achieving sustainable development and improving the welfare of its citizens. Here are some specific ways that Bola Tinubu could strengthen Nigeria's institutional capacity. 1. Improving governance and accountability Nigeria's governance and accountability systems have been weak, leading to corruption, inefficiency, and poor service delivery. Bola Tinubu could improve this area by promoting transparency, reducing bureaucracy, and enhancing citizen engagement. 2. Enhancing Regulatory Frameworks Strong regulatory frameworks are critical for ensuring effective service delivery and promoting private sector investment. Tinubu could support regulatory frameworks by strengthening institutions such as the Nigerian Communications Commission and the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission. 3. Promoting Sharing and Collaboration Knowledge sharing and collaboration among stakeholders are essential for addressing complex development challenges. Bola Tinubu could prioritize these by creating platforms for dialogue and cooperation among government, private sector, civil society, and academic institutions. Strengthening Human Resource Capacities Nigeria's human resource capacities have been weak, leading to poor service delivery and low productivity. Bola Tinubu could improve this by investing in education and training programs for public servants, promoting merit-based recruitment and promotion, and enhancing performance management systems. 4. Modernizing Institutional Structures Outdated institutional structures have been a significant barrier to effective governance and service delivery in Nigeria. Bola Tinubu could prioritize modernizing institutional structures by promoting e-governance, enhancing digital infrastructure, and reorganizing government agencies and ministries to improve efficiency and effectiveness. Solving Nigeria's Corruption Problems Nigeria's corruption problems have been a significant barrier to sustainable development and good governance. Here are some specific ways that Bola Tinubu could help solve this problem. 1. Strengthening anti-corruption institutions Anti-corruption institutions such as the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission the EFCC, and the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission ICPC, have been weak and vulnerable to political interference. Bola Tinubu could prioritize strengthening these institutions by enhancing their independence, resources, and capacity to investigate and prosecute corruption cases, promoting transparency and accountability. Lack of transparency and accountability has been a significant driver of corruption in Nigeria. Bola Tinubu could prioritize promoting transparency and accountability by enhancing disclosure requirements for public officials, promoting citizen participation in governance, and implementing open data and e-governance initiatives. Enforcing anti-corruption laws Nigeria has several anti-corruption laws, but they have been poorly enforced, leading to impunity for corrupt officials. 
Bola Tinubu could improve on enforcing anti-corruption laws by prosecuting corrupt officials, recovering stolen assets, and imposing sanctions on corrupt firms and businesses. Enhancing public procurement systems Public procurement has been a significant source of corruption in Nigeria, with many contracts awarded without due process or transparency. Bola Tinubu could improve on this area by improving the electronic procurement systems, enhancing procurement regulations, and promoting competition and transparency in the bidding process. Promoting Ethical Leadership Ethical leadership is critical for promoting integrity and reducing corruption in Nigeria. Bola Tinubu could prioritize promoting ethical leadership by enhancing leadership development programs, promoting merit-based appointments, and implementing code of conduct for public officials. Overall, Tinubu could solve Nigeria's corruption problem by strengthening anti-corruption institutions, promoting transparency and accountability, enforcing anti-corruption laws, enhancing public procurement systems, and promoting ethical leadership. To close, Tinubu could actually become the president that transformed Nigeria if he applied himself to that objective. I hope you enjoyed this documentary. Watch out for our next documentary on other subjects and personalities in Nigeria. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Yeah.